I'd say, to be honest, if we look at, uh, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm talking to an SMA family and I basically uh, begin to discuss SMA and they say, really, I don't need to get too far into it because uh, fight SMA and those guys and McKenzie and Lawson and all the scientists, they really solved the problem. It's really not an issue anymore. That's when I'm home. That's when it's done. That's when I can move on and focus on something else. Till that day happens, I don't think, uh, I don't think I'll back off one iota. Uh, 17 years ago, we had families driving through the night, coming in saying, you know, I have nobody will help me. What am I going to do? Please help me. We heard you help us. Uh, very little information. I'd get emails. I'd get phone calls saying, I don't know what to do. I can't find any place to help. Now, and then, of course, we, we would take care of the child, straighten them out when they went back to wherever they came from. That institution would usually call us and say, wait a second, <laughs> what'd you do? So, but I think now what I see is people calling and saying, listen, I've had my, I've been, I, I was diagnosed two years ago or three years ago or eight months ago and we've been taking care of this child and everything's fine, but now I'm starting to have a problem with, and I think if you, if you look at that, the difference is they're talking about having been cared for, having been cared for by somebody who knows what they're doing at a facility that has never talked to us, so they obviously have their act together, and they're just looking to, uh, to augment what they're doing. So that's, that's uh, a billion miles from where it was, from where it was when we first basically had nobody anywhere, and now it's, it seems to be pretty, pretty spread out. There's also... Uh, there's People always don't gaps. Have to drive but. through the night as much as they. Well, yeah, they, they never, uh, they never do anymore. They, they basically, they'll come in still because they're really bad, and the really, really bad ones we still end up with. So, but, um, uh, well, not all the really bad ones. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Kathy and Mary, uh, Doctor Sabota, Doctor Strat, uh, you know, the different hospitals. They, they, they've been through our. Uh, they've been they've been with us and they they modified and they they've taken care of everybody. They don't have to fly in from those places. But the places that aren't quite as well versed in the really really sick ones still come in. But the bottom line is that these people are all these people. Most of the ones I talk to, they're being taken care of. They're they're really they know what they're doing before they come to us. So they're only coming to us to solve individual problems. They're not coming to us with that blanket. Nobody will help us anymore. And that I, I can't say enough for that. That's that's a, that's a miracle. I mean, that's just that's better than our greatest hopes. I like analogies. It always helps me with, with families. Uh, the first calculator's out, and I'm not talking about the one from the Apollo where, you know, they had a whole building for a calculator. The first calculator's out, the handheld that we had, had every kind of option on the world on it, if you remember them. They just, it was like huge, and it wasn't because it wasn't sophisticated. It just incorporated everything. Um, newer calculators basically just have the basic functions. And the reason is usability. People will use it. So I think that, that when we first started, we, we saturated with everything we had to do. Every piece of medical technology that we had, we saturated. And I think over the last uh, 17 years, what we've been doing is cutting, 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 down to what's really needed. Because we had to make it usable and, and something that people would buy into. And I think they really have. I think, they've, I think that's why, one of the reasons it's so diverse now because it's 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 more simplified it's more doable it's less scary and i don't think the battle's won because i think that what we have to do is fine tune it so that people understand all the 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 individual components and how they interact and and they can develop their own individual plans too many times we hear some kind of blanket statement i still get emails and phone calls to this day um, two days before I left here, uh, and that was a Friday or a Saturday, or it was the day before I left to drive here, it was a Saturday, and I, I got an email on a Saturday from a family. And basically what's happening is they, they, they've, they're following a process, they're doing what they have to do, but this particular thing isn't working, or that particular thing isn't working. And I think that it's, it's a matter of fine-tuning it to get it to where uh, everybody understands the workings of it, and everybody understands what components interact with what to do it best. I think when that happens, We'll have basically a, a standard way of doing it that everybody can then alter. But I think people right now take the main thing like mechanical coughing, what a cough assist, as being the main focus. And they're so over-focused on that, they forget the stuff that can uh, reduce the need for that and, 
and they, they focus on the wrong thing. So I, and that's really what we've, I spend a lot of my time trying to refocus people on the, you know, you reduce it. The minimal amount that you have to do is better. You really don't want to overkill. It's like that calculator with all that stuff on it. You don't need it. You need the basic one to get the job done. Um, there's, a, there's some really, really bad kids that you need more advanced stuff on, but, you know, the people that are handling it more know that. Another quick analogy, when my, when my children were born and they had rashes on their butts, they had something in the hospital called butt paste, which always made me laugh. Anybody has a child that had a child in an ICU uh, or ever in the hospital, they used butt paste, they know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, a, it's a mixture of like five different ingredients. Well, I'm in the medical field, so when I get home, I made my own, and it didn't work. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I used it. My wife's a nurse, and it didn't work. I went back to the intensive care nurse who uh, my last child was in. She's fine, by the way. But um, when, when, and I talked to the people there, and I had the wrong mixture. I had too much of one thing and not enough of another. And that's really what it is. It doesn't work as well if it's not the right combination dialed in for that child. I'm going to use that dialed in, I'm telling you. <laughs> so anybody who's <laughs> watching this, then they get my dialed in statement. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is where I got it from. Give you a little byline. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I'll put one down the bottom. Yeah. No, the butt face couldn't be a placebo effect because the kid doesn't N know. No, you know, no, and it's not right. Exactly, <laughs> it's not. It either works or it does. I mean, it's really obvious yeah. whether it's working or not. Yeah, exactly right.